And so my marketing sales was high. I had tons of experience before and I started the cleaning business. I was like, I can figure this out. But with cleaning experience, I had none. And because that, like we needed to do what was required. What was required was for us to actually become expert cleaners, for us to actually learn the skill and become great at it. And so all that work, less than 1% of the time does our company need to do correction cleans. And so how did we go from literally having zero cleaning experience, having to comp our third clean ever to now, like we hardly ever get correction cleans. Well, we have really good standard operating procedures. So we have cleaning tech SOPs. So these SOPs are legit. And so they literally talk about everything that we do, right? So bathrooms, kitchen, bedrooms, common areas. We have videos and we have SOPs for caddy organizations, like the caddy that they bring to the house. And we talk about how to do windows and toilets and tubs and showers, and mirrors, and vanity counters, and vanity sinks and baseboards, how to do floors and appliances, interior of the fridge, interior oven, microwave, stovetop, kitchen countertops, cabinets, black spots, sinks, doors, knobs, light fixtures, garbage, like all this. And so it's really cool that when you actually have an SOP, when there is a, a comment or a correction clean or a complaint, the first thing we do is we ask the cleaner, hey, did you follow the SOP? And if they say, yes, we followed it, then we go back and we look to see if it's inside our SOPs that is the problem. Oh, actually there was no SOP on how to do vacuum lines. Let's create a standard operating procedure on how to do vacuum lines. And so this other coin is if it is inside our SOPs, we go back to the cleaner and say, hey, it's right here. And then that becomes the opportunity for us to keep our cleaners accountable to actually following our SOPs. You know, And as human beings, we always like to do things our own way, which is totally fine until somebody complains. Toolkit, right? So we talk about our the tools we use. We talk about the products we use as well. Again, these are just for what we use. Multiverse cleaners, specialty cleaners, cloths and sponges, like what we use for vacuums and mops. Next thing we have is we have a cleaning checklist, right? And the cleaning checklist is specific to the type of clean that we're doing. So we have a deep clean checklist, right? So the cleaner gets this. Also the client gets this as well, so they know exactly what we're gonna clean. We have a general clean checklist. So if somebody is on, on maintenance clean or uh, they're on reoccurring, we do move in or move out cleans. Here's our checklist as well for that. And then vacation rental checklist as well. So vacation rental checklist is a little bit unique because every single vacation rental is a is a little bit different, but we do have a, a standard operating procedure that our cleaning techs, they get trained on. But for each property, it actually has its own checklist. But from a training standpoint, our each new cleaning tech sees this SOP for vacation rental turnovers.